Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Today, we will be talking about forecasting. So the goal of today's meeting is to give you a high-level understanding of what forecasting is and how to use it. By the end of this video, you should be prepared to start your first forecasting model. So first off, what is forecasting? Forecasting is a built-in Snowflake ML model, which allows you to predict future numerical data from historical time series data. An example of this would be if you have historical data for a store and you're looking to predict how the sales will look like in a year or any time period from now. The only two requirements to use forecasting are that your data must include a timestamp column and a numerical data column. Additionally, the timestamp column should have timestamps at a fixed interval and ideally wouldn't have too many missing values. Now let's dive a bit deeper into some of the key features and capabilities. First, the forecasting model can include several other variables that may impact the target variable. For example, if you're trying to predict what the sales of an ice cream shop will look like in the next year, some other variables that might be useful to consider are holidays, the weather, etc. With forecasting, you can also calculate the future importance of variables that are impacting your target variable. So this is particularly useful when you're trying to see what is largely impacting your model's performance and what may also be skewing the model. Lastly, you can use single series or multi-series data in the forecasting model. Now I'll dive a bit deeper into the differences between single and multi-series models. The main difference between a single series and a multi-series forecast model is that a single series model analyzes the time series data from a single source, whereas a multi-series model extends the same concept of multiple dimensions. An example of a single series model would be predicting the revenue of a single store over a short period of time, whereas with a multi-series model, it would be predicting the revenue of a specific item at that specific store in the future. The actual function you'd run is the same. However, you'd include the multi-series values in a list as you can see here. Now that we've talked about some of the key features, let's go over what's happening behind the scenes in the back end. The Snowflake built-in forecasting function uses a variety of techniques and you can actually include configurations to specify how the model should work. So by default, the model uses an ensemble method which includes profit, ARIMA, exponential smoothing, and a gradient boosting machine. This is known as the best model, but it is also set by default, so you don't need to configure it. You can also choose to set the configurations to FAST, which would be solely a gradient boosting machine to handle trends in the data and also use past values to help make predictions. The output of the forecast function will be the expected value of the forecast, the lower bound, and the upper bound, so you kind of have a range of where you would expect the data to be, but also the actual value. Now let's talk about some of the required privileges you'll need to run forecasting. For forecasting, you must have the Create Snowflake ML forecast privilege on the schema where the model is being created. The general recommendation is to have an analyst role, which would be used by the people who actually need to create the forecasts. You can grant roles by running the following grant usage commands, and then actually to use the analyst role, all you would need to do is set the role and set the schema. Now let's go over some of the limitations. So the main limitations to the forecasting model are that the algorithm is fixed. So you cannot tune it for trend, seasonality, or amplitude. Additionally, you must have at least 12 data points per time series model for a full detection. The minimum time stamp Timestamp spacing is one second and minimum seasonal granularity is one minute. The seasonal length for autoregressive features is tied to the input frequency. So it would be 24 for hourly, seven for daily and more. Additionally, you cannot go back to previous versions of a model or clone them. So if you're interested in kind of versioning, you would want to create the separate models and store them separately. Um, now let's go over a just a quick demo. For our sample, in the demo, we've selected the COVID-19 sample table, which contains the positive and negative reported results each day. So what's really important to note here is that we have our timestamp column, which you'll need for any of these time series models, as well as some target columns. For this, I'm specifically interested in forecasting how many positive test results there are each day after my training period. So for this, first, you're going to create your training data set. 
So I've selected the timestamp column as well as the positive new results reported column to do the forecast on. You also want to make sure that it is ordered in ascending um, order for timestamp because that's really crucial for these time series models. Next, to create the actual model, it's very simple. All you're going to do is run this forecast function and name your model. Um, there's a few different inputs you can have, but the important ones are input data. So in this case, it's that training data set that I created. You also want to input, input the timestamp column and target column. So this is just labeling which one is which. Once you run this, you'll have created the instance of the model, and then you can go ahead and call it. Um, again, this is just the name of the model that I created up here, as well as the function for forecast. And you can select how many forecasting periods you'd like. So in this, I was just interested in seeing for five days after my training period what the data looks like, but this you can play around with. You can also change some of the other configurations if you're interested. Um, this output is pretty standard, so you'll see the five timestamps after my training period, as well as what the forecast is and the lower and upper bound. So this is just telling me that it's normal for it to be in this range, but this is kind of what the value is that we're predicting. Um, this is all I have for the demo, but hopefully this was useful for you.